Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 530. Volunteers rolled up their sleeves to help clean up the mess at Midway Public School today following a Saturday fire. Good evening and thanks for joining us. Midway School is 25 miles northwest of Grand Forks in Inkster, North Dakota. Valley News Team's Neil Carlson was there and shows us the damage and the spirit of volunteerism that's cleaning up the mess. Fire crews were back on the scene this morning, putting out hot spots that kept coming back to life on the roof of the school shop where the fire started. It was used for storage. Inside, there were basically just two rooms that received heavy smoke damage, this classroom and the school's weight room. However, there is a light covering of smoke throughout the school that needed to be cleaned up. Professional cleaners have been brought in, but also an army of students and parents will be on hand, all in an effort to save time. It, it's not that hard of work, but it's time consuming. Okay. So if we can't get through all the classrooms, we can't open tomorrow, and we want to open tomorrow. So. Even some folks with no current connection with the school decided to pitch in. Shirley Murkursky's last child graduated from here 31 years ago, and she's now retired living in Grand Forks. I thought about it all night, and I thought, well, I better come. So I'm here. <laughs> all right, all right. So what brought you out here today? I seen the ad in the paper today that they needed help, so. I so decided, there you are. So I decided to come, yes, <laughs> to help out. And it, uh, okay. It's a good cause. Everyone here knows it could have been a lot worse. Instead of cleaning up a bit of smoke damage, the 200-some pre-K through 12 students here could have been left without a school. Well, you're cleaning up today, but things could have been a lot worse. Could have been a lot worse. Right. Yeah, we got very lucky. The fire doors were closed, and okay. it was. Uh, it could have been a lot worse. Yeah. From Midway Public School, Neil Carlson, Valley News Live. And all 76 volunteers showed up to clean smoke damage today. Superintendent Roger Abbey says the school will be back open for business tomorrow morning. Cleanup at Wapaton High School is complete after more than three inches of rain fell in the city this weekend. The cleanup took a little over three hours. The rainfall caused minor flooding and water poured into five classrooms. The ceiling tiles suffered the most damage. School officials say the cost of the damage is between four and five thousand dollars. They add the damage could have been worse if the alarms didn't go off. Your kids' school lunches may be going up as Fargo and West Fargo look to get up to speed with a national school lunch program that makes sure they provide the same level of support for lunches to kids who pay for meals as those who don't. Tonight on Valley News Live at 6, we'll tell you when this could happen and just how much of a price increase you should expect. And for more information right now, you can head to valleynewslive.com and click on the story. Well, we've had a good dose of rain, and now some are wondering when it might start to dry up. Let's check in with meteorologist Robert Hahn with a look at tonight's forecast. Robert? We may see a few breaks in the rain from time to time, but we will continue to see rain chances as we head through tonight, tomorrow, and even on into Wednesday. And along with that, some chilly temperatures, below normal temperatures for this time of year. We're right now mostly in the 40s. Our normal high today in Fargo, 61 degrees. We're nowhere near that. And we're not going to be anywhere near that over the next few days. 46 right now, 41 in Valley City, also 41 in Thief River Falls, 39 in Wadena. A bit of a breeze out there in a few locations, and we'll continue with some breezy conditions as we head through tonight and on into your Tuesday, and those winds primarily out of the east and northeast. Cloud cover, we've got it. That low continues to spin its way right overhead, and underneath those clouds, we do have some rain out there. And even where it's not showing off, you're probably seeing some drizzle and some mist, and even a little bit of fog from time to time. We're seeing a little bit of fog even now here in the Fargo-Moorhead area. As we head through the rest of the evening, a chance for some sprinkles, some fog, some drizzle, and maybe even some plain old rain showers. And we'll continue with those breezes out of the east and northeast and temperatures slowly dropping through the mid-40s. We do have some rain chances, but we also have improving weather on that seven-day forecast, and we'll show you all that here in just a few minutes. Okay, thanks, Robert. Mm -hmm. Authorities are looking for this missing Moorhead man. His name is Todd Logan and was last seen Saturday afternoon. He is believed to be near Stoas Lake in northwest Douglas County. Logan's family told police they are concerned for his welfare because he wasn't acting like himself. 
Logan has blonde hair, glasses, and a slight mustache. He was last seen wearing black, shiny track pants and a tannish colored shirt. If you have any information, you're asked to contact the Douglas County Sheriff's Office. Four out of five men who escaped the Fort Totten Correctional Center on the Spirit Lake Reservation are now in custody. With help from the community, law enforcement were able to find Eugene Two Hearts and James Gray Water today, but are still looking for the last inmate. Dexter Graywind is still missing, but is not considered dangerous. If you have any information, you are asked to call the Fort Totten Police Department. A man convicted of trafficking, trafficking drugs in the Grand Forks area will spend the rest of his life in prison. Jose Luis de la Cruz was sentenced for disturbing, dis, excuse me, distributing methamphetamine. Authorities call de la Cruz a dangerous drug trafficker. He was sentenced to seven consecutive years for pistol whipping someone he thought was cooperating with law enforcement. Overall, the drug trafficking conspiracy moved more than 500 grams of a meth mixture around Grand Forks. Four others have already been sentenced in this case. And if you open your medicine cabinet or maybe the glove compartment of your car, you may run across some prescription medicine you no longer use. So what do you do with it? The answer is coming this Saturday. It's National Take Back Day. That's the day set aside when you can get rid of those uh, sometimes dangerous and unwanted drugs in a safe and easy manner. What's more, it's free and anonymous and no questions asked. All of us have received medications for the right reasons, for surgeries or injuries or dental work. And uh, you know, the mindset in the past was to keep these prescriptions at least through their expiration because you could maybe save the money to not have to refill a prescription. But uh, we found that oftentimes, uh, unfortunately, these past due uh, prescriptions end up in the wrong hands. In Moorhead, you can drop off your old meds at the Main Avenue Hornbockers from 10 till noon on Saturday, or you can go to the South Side Hornbockers from noon till 2. In Fargo, you can bring them to the police department headquarters in downtown Fargo Monday through Friday during normal business.